Buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Monday here on this program. And we got a lot to talk about here today. You guys ready? Holy smokes. First off, we haven't done this in a while, but a very happy birthday to Thunder Rosa. Just wanted to make sure we got out there today. Now, on to the news, because there is a lot of it. Well, we had a busy weekend. The G1 kicked off. I saw matches from night one and night two. Filthy Tom Lawler is there. If you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com and you're wondering what's going to go on with the Filthy Tom Lawler show, well, uh, Filthy and I, both professionals. Nothing has changed except for the start time. He'll be on today. As always, it'll be 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern for today's Filthy Tom Lawler show live. We'll be talking about... His first two matches in the G1, not singles matches yet. Well, he had one singles match, but it wasn't a tournament match. We'll talk about that and uh, his first actual block match coming up next week. And uh, life in Japan and much, much more. So that's coming up this afternoon. Here from Filthy Tom for Pacific 7 Eastern, video.f4wonline.com. If you're a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, we'll have the audio up shortly thereafter. We've also got notes on Ric Flair's last match. In just a few hours, they will announce his opponent or opponents for his final match. We'll tell you about that. Plus, how you can watch it. Got some updates on the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. We have your Raw lineup for tonight. We have your NXT 2.0 lineup for tomorrow. We've got your AEW lineup for Wednesday. We have Rampage, SmackDown results, and uh, plenty more. And if you want the full SmackDown report, by the way, Tune in to myself and Filthy Tom this weekend because we got a lot to say. Text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. What's on your mind? Back in a moment to kick it off. Wrestling Observer Live. Um, got a lot of news to get into here today. So Ric Flair's last match is going to be announced 6.05 Eastern time today which is uh, 3.05 Pacific, so we're just uh, th- three hours away. Less than three hours away, we'll know Ric Flair's final opponent. And uh, who is it going to be? I believe, I believe that it will be opponents. I don't think it's going to be a singles match. But until 6.05 Eastern, anything can happen. So they will announce who it is going to be at that point. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'll just put it that way. Hey, did you know that Ric Flair's having his last match at the end of this month in Nashville, Tennessee? It's true. Ric Flair's last match dot com has all the details. We've got a roast of Ric Flair Friday night, July 29th. The next day, there are panels with Claudio Castagnoli. Yes, Claudio Castagnoli. Horseman Reunion, Bret Hart talking SummerSlam 92. Sunday, former Paige, Foley, Nash, Hardy. So if you haven't seen Paige in a while, now's your chance. And you know who else you can see if you haven't seen him in a while? Brian Danielson is going to be part of this panel. Part of StarCast 5, which they're calling the biggest StarCast yet. Which I find questionable since I'm not there. But pictures, autographs. All the same convention stuff. Black Label Pro, GCW on Friday, New Japan on Saturday. Ric Flair's last match, whatever that's going to be, is on Sunday. And the show's at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Tickets on sale, $39. Ric Flair's last match.com. And uh, a lot of matches on that show, including the Briscoes and the Von Ericks. Kerry Morton, our good friend of the show, Kerry Morton teams with his despicable father Ricky to face Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson, Josh Alexander versus Jacob Fatu, Ren Reed and Clark Connors, and more. So you can check it out. Ric Flair's Last You can pre order. Pay per view is going to be on cable, satellite, and fight TV. So don't miss it, everybody. Ric Flair's Last Match.com. Who's it going to be, Mike? Well, since it's not 6.05 yet, you're still in the running, Brian. You're still in the running for right true. now. That is true. Should I turn my phone off now so just not to mess all this up? No, 
why would you want to turn your phone off? Especially if you could be involved in a tag match where you might be able to extract some revenge on the Rock and Roll Express, who for all we know could be on the other side of that ring facing off against Ric Flair. I have no idea who it's going to be. Hopefully it's everybody. <laughs> Great Muda can come over. Sting can be there. And, and I know it's going to be a packed weekend down there. So Ric Flair, another send off for him. I don't know. And nothing will ever beat the WWE one. I don't think they'll ever do one as is great for anybody else. And I don't know if anybody deserves it as much as he does. Maybe John Cena, maybe later on down the line, but uh, that was impressive enough as it is. So we'll see what they do for this one. I'll tell you one thing, even though my phone is off right now, if they could set up myself and Booker T against Ric Flair and Dave Meltzer, I'm in. Other than that, not doing it. I'd pay for that. Can I do commentary with Stevie Ray outside? You can try to negotiate that, but that's on you, brother. Hmm. All right, Raw tonight, we have got Bianca Belair versus Carmella for the Raw women's title. You ever notice how they do these rematches, but they're always, like, set up with a match where when the match is over, you never want to see the match again. Well, that happened last week, but we're going to get it again tonight. Bianca versus Carmella for the Raw women's title. Miz TV with Logan Paul, and that's it. That's all they've announced. Now, God knows that could have changed. <laughs> Between last night and today. That's what the lineup was yesterday. Last week, we had three matches announced. We had three matches announced on Sunday, and then we only had one match announced on Monday because two of them, they changed their minds. But uh, I won't yeah, get but into But did this. we get a uh, Brock Lesnar appearance being announced before now for Raw last week? So at least there was that. No, he's going to be on SmackDown. Yeah, so he's going to be on SmackDown this week, which means no Raw, so... You know what you'd figure with the home run derby going on, and that obviously is going to take some sort of, you know, a t- <laughs> crunch out of their numbers here. They would have announced somebody to be there, some sort of big name, whatever they have left here. What's Rhonda doing tonight? Could she appear on the show? I don't know if that would really matter all that much, but. We have got uh, NXT 2.0, everyone's favorite show. We've got JD McDonough versus Cameron Grimes. We do have a 20-woman battle royal for an NXT Women's Championship match. And somebody did go on our board last night, and they did come up with 20 women. Now, of course, one of those women was Io Shirai. I'm not sure if she's even capable of returning yet. I'd have to look at the uh, injury report. But uh, 20 women do exist for this, uh, this battle royal. Uh, they announced it on uh, WWE.com. Is that really a question, though, in NXT? I can see being on the main roster, especially if you try to go by brand. You can barely get five women on one side. Except they do get 30 women in the Royal Rumble. There is a ton of random women in NXT just hanging out, like with, you know, what's your boy's name there? Well, yeah, but we don't know who they are. Like, every week there's some backstage locker room segment with, like, eight random women. I have no idea who they are. Uh, Never. I, I still... That's the thing. It's like... You don't know who Valentina Faraz is? Here's the thing. Okay? They they are looking for a certain look in their men and their women. Okay? And so, uh, I mean, someday I'll figure it out. But at this point, between the Fallon Henley and Tatum Paxley and, and Valentina Faraz, I think you mentioned, and then... There's who's the one that uh, is all wacky does math. Yeah, who's the one that who's the smart one that does well, math? Well, there's Le- there's Kiana Leah Hale. James, Kiana James, Leah it's Hale like, with bro, Chase U. I can't figure out who is who watching this show. <laughs> so I'm sure they have. I'm sure that you they could find 20 women that all pretty much look exactly the same for this battle royal. You know, there's going to be. You know, whatever. Uh, seven blondes, seven brunettes, and then, I mean, it's just like, that's what this place is right now. And, I mean, you can do it. Well, they have I, two redheads. You got Alba Fire, and you got... Uh... But I will say this. I will yes. say this. Mm-hmm. The fact that this is a 20-woman, random, out-of-nowhere battle royal to determine who will get the next shot at Mandy Rose, the winner is going to be somebody that people are not expecting. That's the point of this battle royal. Like, it's not going to be, uh, it probably won't be Alba Fire or somebody that, you know, you would think, oh, maybe this person's Nikita next Nikita Lyons. I don't think it's going to be, uh, but I mean, it could be anybody. But I think that's why they're doing this. We have Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen 
versus pretty deadly for the NXT UK Tag Team Titles. Are they have they been inducted into the Hall of Awesome oh, yet? They're or close. Do you have, okay, they're close, brother. Roderick Strong versus Damon Kemp, the in ring debut, the in ring debut of Axiom, who is a kid, who in fact has wrestled for NXT before. But you see. It's much like uh, Superstars of Wrestling, 1992. You get a new gimmick, and you're just new. You've never been around before. Even even if you were Demolition Crush, but now you're Crush the Hawaiian. You have the same name, and you're the same guy, but you're actually a different guy. Well, yeah, he's a Kona Crush now. I know, but the point is they didn't even change his name when they gave him a new gimmick, and then they never acknowledged that he was the other guy. With the same name. Anyway, Von Wagner and Solo Sokoa will have a confrontation. The Schism, which is a horrible name. It is. It's atrocious. Mm. They will reveal their identities. And that is NXT 2.0. And then, of course, on Wednesday. <laughs> on Wednesday, Brian takes off so he doesn't have to no, talk about it. Thursday, again. I'm leaving this time. You son of a. So, well, why? You, oh, you don't want to review Dynamite? No, nah, to be honest with you, I won't be here on Friday, so. I'm glad that we just hash all this out on the air. So, what are you doing Friday? I got places to go. Places to go. I you know go. you can do this show on a cell phone when you're traveling. I could get with the program. I could. Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho, barbed wire death matches Wednesday. Luchasaurus and Christian Cage versus the Varsity Blondes. Brody King versus Darby Allen and John Moxley and Wheeler Yuta versus the Best Friends. That's the lineup for that show so there you go everybody lots of stuff coming up lots of stuff including the music that takes us to break usually around this of point. all the times for you not to just ramble through the music <laughs> well you know dom will hit that music and we'll go to point. a break you know why because i said he'd hit the music and he hit it exactly. immediately yeah back in a moment observer live mike did you watch any of this G1. I saw the first night's block matches as well as Filthy Tom's debut in New Japan proper. And I also saw Shingo Takagi take on Juice Robinson from night two. I haven't seen the other three matches from night two, the block play So we watched the exact yet, same matches. Is that true? Yeah. Well, well was, we saw some pretty damn good there matches. There was one exception. I, I did not watch the, uh, I didn't watch Jay White and Sonata. Because I had limited time, and I got uh, mixed reviews of that match. I'm surprised you got mixed reviews. It yeah. was a it was a very good match. Was it better than Okada and Cobb or Osprey and Phantasmo? I don't believe that it was, but it just was another notch on what was a really good first night of that tournament. Realize I know that I have uh, I have heat with old Juice Robinson for working us over here on this program, but let's be honest. What the hell happened at the end of that match? Well. What went wrong? <laughs> the match was really good. It was. Until literally the last, like, 30 seconds. And then it just, like, went off the rails. It did not go off the rails as bad as uh, some other matches I've seen this week, like that uh, Natty Liv Morgan match or the oh. Lash Legend match or, <laughs> well. or the main event of Rampage. But uh, they all of a sudden just, like, they just just fell apart, and then the crowd got quiet, trying to figure out what was going on, and then Juice just hits his move totally out of nowhere, and the ref like tells him to cover, and then he covered and it was over. It was totally anticlimactic, and he looked tired. He looked exhausted when that match was over. What did Kevin Kelly say? It was about what four hundred days, three hundred sixty-eight days, whatever it was, since Juice Robinson had wrestled inside of a New Japan ring, and. Maybe some fatigue at play there. Maybe carrying his big ego has tired him out a little bit. He needs to drop some of that uh, nonsense that he's been doing. Drop the fake U.S. title and get back in the gym, work out a little bit, and be ready for this rest of this G1 coming up. So uh, that match was good, although I would not say that it was great. The Okada-Jeff Cobb match was an excellent match, which Okada won with the Rainmaker after getting pounded on the entire match because he is in the giant block, which means that he has to face a bunch of giants and also Filthy Tom. Can he survive? Well, we know he can beat at least one of them. 
But can he win the block? Will Ospreay and Phantasma was a freaking, Seth freaking Ugh. Rollins, great match. The greatest finish ever. As, uh, well, let's uh, Will Ospreay goes for the <laughs> os cutter, and Phantasmo in midair catches him for a backslide. Will Ospreay kicks out at the very, very, very last instant. Phantasmo immediately holds up three fingers to the ref, and that brief moment of holding up three fingers, Will Ospreay just decapitates him with the uh, uh, hidden blade and pins him. That match was awesome. Best match I saw of the first two nights. It was the best of El Phantasmo. Yeah, no I gimmicks know, except for one back rake. Yeah, and I know everybody likes that, and I know some people will say, well, you got to have the, the bastard Phantasmo to really appreciate this one. No, <laughs> I like this one a lot, even if he's got more chicanery, which takes place regularly during his matches. I think we're past that, and I know we're not as a character. I know we're not because he's Bullet Club, but the potential is there where when you drop all that sort of stuff, same thing with Will Ospreay is he's kind of mellowed over time from doing as much flying and, and where he's at right now. He's matured greatly, and I think El Phantasmo has matured greatly as a wrestler in a very short period of time, and he could really be a player there as a foreign heavyweight coming up here in the future. You know, when you're doing uh, junior tag team matches, you yeah, may as well do a little bit of wacky, who cares? But, man, you're in the G1, and there will be there will be matches in the G1 where uh, he might be able to pull out a little bit of wacky. But night one, first match, no wacky, and it was awesome. And, yes, Filthy Tom looked great, beat uh, Kosei Fujita. And then the second night, it was him and uh, Royce Isaacs, or as we like to call him in Team Filthy, Hoyce Isaacs, against David Finley and Yoshihashi. Old, old Hoyce got beaten by David Finley. What can you do? But uh, Filthy's got a lot of charisma. I don't know if you've noticed or not. And I was like, he's a, also got a lot like a of proud denim. father. I taught him denim. everything he knows about denim. Did you teach him that? My I, God. I got a lot of denim, dude. Man, even the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Obari, is coming out and saying, "My God, denim. That's what that man is all about, and it fits him perfectly. A tough, resilient denim is the symbol of his fight style and of life itself." Filthy Tom Lawler takes Japan. This guy goes, Brian taught him to strip out of blue jeans? Yeah, What's so weird about that? Do you do a little dance when you do when you do it like he does? Did you teach him I that? I mean, I'm not going to do it on the air, but... So anyway, the G1's going along just fine. Uh, standings. Everyone who won has two points. Those are the current standings. I tried to explain that last night, but Dave cut me off. <laughs> Told me we didn't need standings. Oh, man. And actually, we you're... do need standings. The standings are now, everybody who won has two points. Everybody who lost has no points. Those are the standings. Do you know how long Got it? this tournament is, Brian? Do you understand how long Bro, it this is? tournament is so long that Tom doesn't even have his first match for a week. Yeah, and you know what that means? There's going to be a lot of math Dave is going to be doing during shows with you. I can't he wait. tries to figure out what can happen and what comes next. I can't wait to see your reaction. Can you actually put up a camera for that? I know it's out of the ordinary for Wrestling Observer radio shows, but could you please do that for all of us, please, to get your live reactions to Dave talking about this? Hey, listen, I realize it's lazy and all, but uh, Dave will watch the shows, and he will scribble on his yellow legal pad all the wins and losses, and and he'll do all this math. I just go to Wikipedia. It's all right there. (laughs) That's the easy way to do it. That's (laughs) <laughs> but can you trust Wikipedia? Well, not always, but uh, sometimes. Sometimes I can. I mean, listen, I trust Wikipedia to add stuff up. I don't trust them to have facts straight all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. Did you guys watch SmackDown and Rampage? No. No, I didn't, actually. I can't watch either? No. No. What no. a lazy man. Nah, I had a bunch of other stuff to do, including recording other podcasts. Including a radio, a national radio show where we review these these shows. Is this a full time job? Are you paying me full time money? Sometimes Why there would are I going pay to be you full time money for a part time gig. When we're not, that doesn't pay- make sense. Excuse me. Did you just say you pay full time money for a part time gig? No, I said, why would I do that? Well, I'm hey, a business there, here. Not there's an idiot. going to be times then on the weekend where I'm 
more concentrated on other things, including family and other wrestling, as opposed to SmackDown and Rampage, which I know you cover many times, including hopefully with Filthy Tom. Do you think he watched SmackDown while he was over in Japan? Yes. Actually, he did. He wrestled G1 matches and watched SmackDown and watched New Japan Strong. And? And what? He He did his job. You didn't record two Mid-Atlantic Championship podcasts, which are going to be coming to everybody's ears really soon as we continue on the countdown to the road to Greensboro here. Final conflict, Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood against Sergeant Slaughter and Don Carnoodle. No one cares about that. What they care about is the SmackDown show. You guys mm-hmm. realize how bad this show was? How bad? The show was so bad, it was just, it was bad. Do you realize they had one match in the entire first hour? One match in the entire first hour. It was Liv Morgan and Natty. And they botched one spot after another. I don't know what in the world happened in this match, but it was just, oh, my Lord. And that was the only match in the first hour. Then they build up a match for the second hour, and they don't even give it to us, Lacey Evans and Aaliyah. It isn't until uh, uh, well into the second hour that we get Drew McIntyre versus Ridge Holland, which goes three minutes. And then, for those of you that are still watching the show, at about seven after... Out comes Theory. Seven after. Comes down to the ring. They proceed to do a recap of Brock Lesnar on Raw. Then they go to an interview with Madcap Moss. Paul Heyman then interfere or interrupts the uh, interview, and they talk for a while. Then Moss does his entrance. Then they go to commercial. Then they come back for a video package for Maximum Male Models. They will be debuting the Beachwear Collection next week, plus the debut of Maxine Dupree, the sister of Max Dupree. And finally, 18 minutes after Theory made his entrance, they ring the bell for his match. Eight For 18 minutes, this guy was standing in the ring, in the dark, while they played. 18 minutes of video packages and commercials. They then proceed to wrestle for 12 minutes, which ends when Theory hits Madcap with the briefcase for the disqualification, which leads to Theory leaving and running into Sami Zayn, who now, for reasons I can't explain, because he was warned and then he failed, but now he is an honorary ooze. He distracts Theory, allowing Madcap and the Usos to surprise him and then beat him up. Theory was on screen for 33 straight minutes. Well, not all on screen, but God help me. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And they tried to edit to a different camera angle where you couldn't see it, but you could see it. So he interfered, and then there was an argument afterwards with... Andrade and Roosh and Private Party. and Yeah, that was uh, the show. Not the best rampage. It started started well, then kind of fell off the cliff a little bit. It was a missable show. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do about this show. But it is definitely, definitely not an A show. It is a B show. And I like it, but it's a B show. I don't think you had to even declare that, did you? We just had to set it straight in your own mind. It's been a B show, unfortunately, for quite some time. And they've hamstrung themselves with with Friday night and not wanting to do Thursday. I mean, Thursday night football is going to be on Amazon this year. I know Tony doesn't want to go against the NFL, but, like, if you had a reason, if you're looking for a way out, there it is. I mean, you're going to have to have Amazon anyway, so cable's open. You're not even talking about, I guess it's going to be on the NFL Network, too, but, I mean, I mean, come on. There's got to be a better night for this show. It's got to be incorporated into Dynamite better if it's going to matter, even if the matches on there are not must see every single week. You're going to have to figure out a way to plug it into Dynamite and try to make something out of it. And if you can't get it off Friday, why not do everything you can? And maybe he has. For all I know, maybe he has. But try to get replays on True TV or replays on TBS and TNT. 
I, I don't know what you can do. Bleacher Report is just not strong enough. They don't have their own Peacock or their own Tubi or something like that. And until they do, it's going to be tough because they don't seem like they're going to be on HBO Max. And even if they are, they'll just probably get lost in the mix over there. So I don't know what the answer is here, but it is absolutely a B show. And, and frankly, it feels like a C show sometimes where if you don't miss it, you don't even like you, you wait and see. Did anybody even say if it's worth seeing the DVR on? And I'd love to see what the DVR numbers are for it. But like there are times where it gets to be Sunday or Monday and there is no buzz over that show to go back and even catch any of it. For as I live in Nashville, I will be going to Ric Flair's last match as well as the New Japan show, but that's all of the wrestling I can handle for the weekend. I'm sure SummerSlam will be fun live, but it's too much for me. How does WWE feel about shows piggybacking, uh, piggybacking off their big events? Well, they don't like it. If they had their way, there'd be no shows. If they had their way, there'd be no wrestling in this country except WWE. Must be must you be a this. youngin. Must be a youngin because they've been dealing with this for a long time. That's why they've wanted to expand out WrestleMania and take over the whole weekend because look at what Dragon Gate and Ring of Honor were able to do initially latching onto those shows and you see what kind of everything became here. So I like question the mark here on the YouTube chat. Rampage, it's fine. It's a bad time slot. Mike has got a lot of bad takes. Like it's my like it was my bad take to put the show on friday and not put it on anywhere where it could maybe possibly compete with the you know nfl as if that really matters in the world of aew well, i mean come hold on, on hold on hold on because someone else someone else on the uh on the board made some comment about ah not this cat listen this is not a casual fan thing if if rampage listen if rampage had started out averaging eight hundred thousand viewers and they were still averaging eight hundred thousand viewers fine okay but that didn't happen all right now they're down in the fours and they dropped low during the nba playoffs and during preemptions and everything like that and now that's over it's been several weeks for people to get back into the habit and they haven't which means what happened was they got preempted people got out of the habit of watching and then they didn't start watching again once they got back it's not a time yes obviously Obviously, Friday at 10 p.m. is not the ideal time slot, but they were doing much better in that same time slot on the same day a while ago. And everything they've now they're since not. It's been cold. So it's everything cold I'm talking show. about is about hey, let's see what we could do to get it back to where it was, not to grow it from wherever. Well, it sounds like what they're doing isn't going to work if you described it in the way that you did right there. So it is a cold show right now. I don't know how they jar things together here, but I don't care what you put on that show unless it's going to be a steady diet of Punk and Danielson and your top stars in top positions every week. They are going to have big problems on Friday. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I'm a... You all right? Are we getting another Uso versus Dawkins match Oh, that was, I'm sorry, that was sent Friday. I almost had a heart attack. I thought we were watching that match again on Raw tonight. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. And you thought the Usos and the New Day went too many times around. My God. Usos and Street Profits the same way. Think they could use a couple of tag teams there? My God. This person here says, is there a real-life beef between Liv and Natty? I saw a house show video on YouTube where Natty no soul lives finisher after the match. She just sits up, points at Liv, says something, and rolls out of the ring. <laughs> hey, listen, it's not it's not beyond the realm of possibility to think that if you've been watching their matches lately. But apparently there's not a problem between them. I don't know I don't know what's going on, dude. They work it. It's it no well, they're not working. Bro, if you watch SmackDown, they weren't working a bad match. They just couldn't get on the same page. Well. And I don't know why. I think the, the you know, pointing and yelling part may be working. And if it wasn't working and if it was actually done out of frustration for real, I have a feeling that it would very quickly be turned into something online to mess with people. So who knows there? I just know I don't want to see any more matches. That would be fine. Less bad wrestling with everybody, please. Well, I'll send a memo to all the companies. Thank you. On behalf of Mike Sempervivi, you are required to have no more bad matches. Please, especially on NXT. Oh. We can really take care of this. Only a handful of people I really need to see out there. Don't, okay? don't, don't make fun of my favorite show. Hey, listen, they're all trying. It's not, it's not the wrestler's fault. 
They're being thrown out there. Mm. Hor- who? Like, who? Never mind. Hey, we're out of time. I think Mike, as always, callers and listeners of this studio. 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern tonight. Video.f4wonline.com and WrestlingObserver.com. Myself and Filthy Tom talking to G1 and more. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>